today we will show you 6 life hacks that really work and may come in handy. It's the winter holiday season now and every family is busy with all this fuss. An integral part of which is decorating the Christmas tree with their favorite decorations. But what do you do if one of them doesn't have the special string to hang it on a tree? You just need to pull this wire from the Christmas toy and hook it on the tree like this. Now put the toy back and it's all done. Nothing can spoil your Christmas tree now. Well, except for a cat that will turn it upside down when you're not home. I've already had a lot of computer chairs and almost every single one of them, after a few years of use, had a problem with the gas lift cylinder, which regulates its height. For some reason, the gas was gone out of it and the chair just fell to the lowest position, which was extremely uncomfortable to sit in and work in. After changing so many chairs, I found a simple solution, for which we need an ordinary sewage pipe, the inner diameter of which is about the same as the diameter of the chair tube. Using a can of Fanta and a marker pen, we need to measure the right length of the tube. Then, with the help of a metal saw, we cut the pipe in this place. Clean it up a bit, and now let's make another line, only along the tube, and cut along the line in the same way. We could also cut it with a saw, but we use this drill instead to save time for making of the video. Next, we bend the tube at the point of the cut, and put it on the tube of our chair. To fix it firmly, we need two wire ties to tighten the white tube. Remember that it will hold the whole weight of your body. And it's all done! We chose the length of the tube so that it doesn't allow the chair to fall below a certain level, so it will always be fixed at a desired height. Imagine a situation when you need to drill a hole in the metal and don't have the right diameter drill bit at hand, or just don't have it at all. Search around and maybe you will find a couple of self-taping screws for metal that have this tip which is practically a built-in drill and is able to make a hole for itself. Just plug it into the screwdriver or a drill and try to drill the aluminium plate with it. It seems to work and in a couple of seconds we get a nice and straight hole. Now let's try to do the same on a thicker but metallic plate. Even in this case, the screwdriver copes with the metal no worse than any drill bits I have ever used before. These screws also come in different sizes, so we can get different hole diameters. The cold weather is coming, and it could be useful to check if your radiators have air in. Usually, to do this, you need to loosen the screw a little with a screwdriver, and as you do this, you get a stream of water flowing somewhere up or down, pouring all around. What the hell is wrong with you? But if you take a plastic cup and a small magnet, you can easily attach them to the right wall of the battery. And the direction of the water stream can actually be adjusted by turning this white thing. Now we easily unscrew the faucet and the water goes straight into the cup, while we enjoy this miracle engineering and celebrate it by tasting this water. Imagine that you need to do some welding work, you turn everything on and get completely ready, and then you remember that you don't have a mask. Of course, you can continue without it if you want to go blind, but if you do not, go find a big piece of thick cardboard. From it, you have to cut about this shape, something similar to a shovel. Now put a smartphone in its middle. Turn it on its side, look at the place where the camera is, and draw a small rectangle there. Then cut it with a knife to get a nice hole for the camera in this place. Next, take four pieces of cardboard and then glue them in four places, so that your smartphone sits tightly between them and does not fall out when you move. Think you already guessed what we have in mind, and you're right. But remember that smartphone cameras need protection from burning sparks that can get onto them. That's when we remembered that we have a glass in our microscope that would fit there perfectly. Although you can take any piece of glass or clear plastic and glue on this window with hot glue or duct tape. Well, let's test our Supermask 3000 and just look at what an awesome result we get. 
this camera instantly reacts to the bigger flash and dims the image, and when the burning stops, it brings the brightness back. It works so well that I think in the future, masks for welding might be designed this way. If you need to go build a fire, but the only thing you have is this sort of a gasless lighter, you can still do it. We decided to do it at home, because Cookie also wanted to see a life hack, but he can't go outside. First, we have to take this metal part of the lighter, bend it out a little, and using it as a scraper, we scrape some plastic off of the wall of the lighter's body on a leaf, for example. Now we look at the drum of the lighter and see the black stone underneath it. If you rotate it slowly, the notches on the drum strip away some stone material, making it crumble down. And then, if we make a sharper jerk, the released sparks will set all of the shavings on fire. Now let's repeat this with the plastic. At first, it doesn't work, but after a couple of seconds, the material lights up, and we've got a flame, which is enough to make a proper fire in the wild. But don't do it at home, unless you want to burn your house down. Now I'll show you a simplified version of a little genius life hack, which I found on one of the YouTube channels I watch sometimes. For this, we need two good batteries and a red hot soldering iron. First, we have to unbend an ordinary paper clip. Then, with the help of a special solder plate, we solder its end to the positive pole of the battery. We cut off the paper clip, leaving a small piece of wire. And then take another battery, the negative pole of which we solder to this wire's edge. This way we get a current and at the same time bind batteries together. Next, we need an ordinary white 3 volts LED, which you can buy or take out of some old device. Our batteries, when soldered together, give out 3 volts, which is enough to allow this LED to shine from them. Now we solder the LED in the correct polarity and get a perpetual flashlight like this. It is called Perpetual, because as tested by the Lifehacks inventor, it was shining for over a year without stopping. Its light is more than enough to easily navigate in the house if the power is out. You can also use it to read a book or install a perpetual illumination in the hamster's cage. This lamp is not afraid of water and can take a bath while continuing to shine. But if you don't want to solder the wire at the battery, you may replace it with another option in just under a minute. Take a piece of foil, roll it up into a narrow strip, open a matchbox and put it inside as shown in the video. And press it to the wall with two batteries inserted in opposite positions, so that the foil shorted their contacts. On the other side, we put the LED so it's powered by batteries, and that's it. We close the lid and now we may use a simple analogue of a perpetual flashlight. Of course it will be less resistant to physical impact, but not worse in terms of amount of light. You came to your friend's party, and they ask you to cut up a delicious pizza. But you notice a hungry kitty asking for a little slice for himself. And here's some advice on what to do in this situation. Cut the pizza into two pieces, and from the middle, cut out this triangular stripe. Now fold it back and cut into equal slices for the friends. Pull them off center a little and mix them up, and voila! All done! With this magic, we get an extra slice of pizza for the hungry kitty. As a result, the kitty is fed and the pizza is in its place and none of the friends will even come close to thinking that there is something wrong with it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video!